Hey guys, Braxis here, and I'm just going to be checking out a few quick suggestions that are super simple. So, my first suggestion is from... Mohamed Shekel, if I pronounce that correctly. Yeah, I think I pronounced that correctly, but, uh... Yeah, obviously I'm playing Universe Sandbox 2, and, um... Yeah, he asks, what happens if I swap Earth and Mercury's orbit? I think I've been asked this before, too. Um, I don't think very much is going to happen, other than we're probably going to destroy all life on Earth, but, you know. That's kind of a staple of the channel, I, I would say. Um, just kind of one of those things we like to do here, so let's go ahead and destroy all life on Earth real quick. Because, uh, you know, we like doing that. So let's put Mercury roughly at one astronomical unit. Of course, the eccentricity and stuff will not be the same, and I did kind of misplace that. Uh, there we go. Nope, still 1.01. I'm gonna have to pause the game because my camera is moving slightly. Um, where is 1AU? There it is. Now I'm only gonna place it at its semi major axis, not the exact orbits, but let's put Earth right here where Mercury is, which, where is it sitting currently? I'm not going to place it exactly, but its semi-major axis is 57 million? No, 5.7 million kilometers from the Sun. That's where it's currently sitting, of course. Its orbit is slightly eccentric, as you can see. It gets pretty close right here, but somewhat far right here. Um, right now, it's kind of in that in-between, so I'm going to drop it at that distance. So, right here, roughly. So there's Earth. Probably not going to fare too well. But, we don't really expect it to. So, let's watch. Let's see how fast uh, it, it takes Earth to actually burn away. Temperature is already climbing pretty significantly fast the temperature right here. It's already at 27 degrees Celsius. It's actually getting quite warm. In fact, this would be what we would call pretty much an extreme greenhouse effect. Or not an extreme greenhouse effect, but global warming for sure. You can see our ice caps in the north are slowly melting away. And Antarctica. Let's uh, slow this down a bit. You're actually starting to see quite a bit of its land uh, actually appear. Instead of it just being completely covered in snow. The North Pole is almost out of snow. You can see that uh, Greenland there is pretty much thawed. And, uh, let's just speed this up and watch what happens. It's already at 42 degrees Celsius. So we're already losing our snow caps, polar caps, and it's not faring too well. As you can see... Antarctica is slowly losing its ice and becoming, well, more of a uh, hospitable place to live. And it has pretty much lost its polar caps. It's now warming up quite quickly. But that also means, as you can see, things are starting to look a little bit more dry towards the um, equator. Yeah, Antarctica is basically thawed out. And now the temperature is 58 degrees, and it hasn't even been a month yet. Or maybe it has. I'm not sure. Watch on the time right here. I don't know what it started at. Okay, so things are starting very dry. But pretty soon here, we're going to start losing some of our ocean. So let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit more. And let's get it up to 100 degrees Celsius, which you can watch right here. You can see in the game it is October 20th, 2016. And there's still snow up there, shockingly. I think some of the snow might have returned. It might be going through like a winter season or something like that. Uh oh, here we go. We're at 90 degrees Celsius. As you can see, things are turning a little bit more brown. They're not green anymore, and you can actually start to see some of the coasts appear. 
As you can see, it's drying up. In fact, we're losing a lot of our bays and seas, so faring too well. In fact, uh, North America's pretty much, actually it is bridged to Europe through the uh, northern, northern region, so um, probably not a good thing. In fact, uh, surface life probably is not persisting on this planet anymore. Maybe, maybe in the polar regions, but probably not. And let's continue. As it hits 100 degrees Celsius, that is the boiling point of water. Of course, our oceans are very saline, and water is rather good at insulating, so it's going to take a little bit to uh, burn it away. It's probably going to take to about 120 degrees Celsius to actually cook our oceans away fully. So, let's watch as it gets hotter. And of course, as this planet gets warmer, it's going to actually start releasing more greenhouse gases. So it's going to be uh, incrementally going up and accelerating its temperature. But I don't think that's going to be simulated in the game. You can imagine there is a crazy amount of wildfires and stuff on the planet right now. We're now, to, uh, now at 110 degrees Celsius. I imagine it's getting quite warm. In the oceans, I mean. And now we should start to see them boiling off. So let's see what the oceans are looking like now. We have pretty much bridged from North America to Greenland to Europe. Iceland, I think. Can't really tell there. And look at that. We've almost... Actually, we have. Let's uh, pause the game here. Uh, I just missed it. I think we've bridged from uh, Asia to Australia, so I think we've connected all the continents except for Antarctica so far. So you can literally drive a car from North America to Australia, Australia currently. Interesting. And let's continue. I'm noticing that it actually turned a little bit more green up here. It's only going to get warmer from here. And it only keeps going up. We are at 140 degrees Celsius, and there's a sun. Probably rather big in our sky right now, because we are very close to it. Uh-oh, here we go. We're at 150 degrees Celsius. And as you can see, our oceans are basically boiling away. Basically, it is super humid, and we have super dense atmosphere. Due to all this water actually being up in the atmosphere, and... Pretty shortly here, we should start to see it evaporate away from the planet. Prize are still green on this planet, though. <laughs> As you can see, it's actually up in the polar regions. In the green, which is kind of funny. But here we go, as we lose the last of our ocean on our planet. As we climb up to 170 degrees Celsius, it looks like we have very little. The only ocean I see is pretty much at the fault lines in the uh, deeper portions. Uh, nothing around California. Up here around Alaska, we have a little bit. Japan, we have a little bit. And some places around uh, Australia. Kind of out there in the Pacific Ocean. So, yeah, not much water left. Imagine sea life is not faring too well. The question is, would there still be underground life? I'm not too sure, and small reservoirs that are unaffected really by the surface temperatures. They're insulated by rock. Well, that's going to be irrelevant soon, because pretty soon, Earth is actually going to start glowing and getting molten. So, let's speed up time until that happens. I, I still like it that it's like still partially green up here, but it's drying out, as you can see. And there goes all the plant life up in the polar regions. So let's pause the game and see what Earth is starting to look like. Very scorched looking. As you can see, the uh, bottom of the oceans here are just dark. 
You could imagine that there was many, many fires and stuff occurring, and plants were just burning away, forests and all that, as they were also dying and drying out. Speed up time more. And I think we might have actually stabilized. Look at the temperature. It's not actually climbing very much. It's still climbing, but very incrementally. Not as rapidly as before. We're actually sitting at 215 degrees. And I think it's dropping. I think we're actually going through, like, seasons now. Because so we don't really have an eccentric orbit going on. And let's speed up time a little bit. And the temperature is actually dropping quite significantly. This is because I sped up time a little bit too much. And if I slow down time, it'll actually incrementally go back up. It's because there's a weird bug in the game right now, where if I speed up time, we actually go down in temperature. It's kind of weird. You can see some of the oceans are even returning back. So... It looks like we stabilized at 164 degrees currently. But I think the real stabilized temperature is probably 208. Um, I don't think I can speed up time and have it go back up. As you can see, it gets rather consistent once I speed up time. I'm not sure what's actually causing this, but I don't think it happened in earlier versions of Universe Sandbox 2. But, um... I'm just going to say, for the sake of I can't seem to get it to go back up, that we have stabilized at 164 degrees Celsius. And have we actually lost any of our oceans? Um, let's drop Earth and orbit out here and compare how much water it has. Yes, we've actually lost quite a bit of our oceans. Which is interesting, because the oceans are now in the atmosphere. Actually, no, it doesn't look like it's gone down. Never mind. So it's all still in the atmosphere. And, well, there's still a little bit. Not very much, so it's got to be rather hot water. It's got to be near boiling point there. So, it doesn't look like Earth would actually go molten if it was uh, orbiting around the sun this close, um, according to the game anyways. However, think otherwise. I think it would actually start glowing and get pretty bad. But maybe not. Maybe it just doesn't have thick of, like, as thick of an atmosphere as something like Venus. Which, if we reduce its semi-major axis, which I can do, I think, under motion here. Ah, yes. Semi-major axis. I could drop it down to close to Earth's orbit here. Let's just move it, like, that close and hit play. And as you can see, it starts glowing and getting pretty bad because the greenhouse effect is pretty extreme here. And you can see it's even glowing in its night sky. So it doesn't take long at all for Venus to start going molten. Which is sitting at 700 degrees. So something like this with a major greenhouse effect would be quite significant. But we have Mercury over here, which, um... It doesn't really have much of an atmosphere. It does have a magnetic field though, so it could probably retain at least somewhat of an atmosphere. So, let's just throw a little bit of water at Mercury. Into a snowball. Let's reduce the water. Oh, too much. Let's pause the game here. There we go, that's much better. It is very sensitive between too much water and too little. How can I reduce it by one step? Okay, so there's Mercury with some oceans. Um, the only problem with this is it doesn't have an atmosphere, so it can't actually melt this, but 
given its temperature, it's actually very close. Look at the surface temperature. It's actually negative one degrees Celsius, so I mean, if we could just get a little bit of a greenhouse effect, we could actually possibly terraform Mercury. So let's increase its greenhouse effect. Let's add a little bit of atmosphere. And let's increase its surface pressure. This is increasing actually rather slowly. Very, very slowly. Okay, let's just hit play. And see if it actually thaws out. Because it should be not quite above 1 degree Celsius, is it? Let's just keep increasing the surface pressure until we actually get some liquid ocean. This should be increasing the temperature. Not quite. Increasing the greenhouse effect. Here we go. And it's starting to become liquid, so... Here we go, here's our liquid ocean. Let's get this up to about 10 degrees Celsius. For a kind of comfortable temperature. The thing is, the gravity and density of Mercury is actually quite high, so I'd imagine if it had even little bits of atmosphere. The gravity of this atmosphere would actually be uh, quite significant, probably increasing the pressure a little bit. But what that would do is it would make the uh, actual atmosphere not as, like, high of altitude. It would actually pull it closer to the planet. And if you're actually on Mercury, well, it would actually feel a little bit less than Earth, but quite a bit more than the moon. It would be about a third, or is it half, of Earth's gravity. So you'd be able to jump about twice as high, I do believe. Because Mercury, well, it's actually uh, one of our densest... Actually, it is the densest planet in the solar system, if I'm correct. So, there you go. There is a kind of terraformed Mercury, of course. I can't really do anything about uh, the actual colors on textured planets. And if I add something like... If I launch material, like um, organic material or something like that, it doesn't actually make a difference. Um, of course, that's incredibly fast. Uh, Let's go to meters per second and change it to like 100 so I'm not blowing up the planet. And I still managed to scorch the planet a little bit. But there's some organic materials, but it's not actually going to terraform. Because, well, the game doesn't really have terraforming mechanics yet, and hopefully it'll get them in the future. But there's essentially our terraformed Mercury. It just needs a little bit of atmosphere and quite a bit of water. Which we do believe there's a little bit of water in Mercury's craters. And Earth, well, it doesn't fare too well in Mercury's position, but it looks like it still retains a little bit of water. Anyways, um, yeah, if you guys like the video, please leave it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe, it really does help, and I will see you guys in the next one.